I have been wanting to create this video for a while because this video on how to create fur and illustrator has been and continues to be one of my most popular videos on my YouTube channel. So I thought to myself, how cool would it be to create a companion video on how to create fur in Photoshop? The method I'm gonna show you today is not the most common method, but of all the ones that I've tried, it's the one I like the best. And the reason I like it is because it allows you to create the look of fur with one continuous brush stroke. Start with a regular round brush. My brush is at 25 pixels, and I'm going to flatten the brush roundness to almost look like a kernel of rice. And I'm going to change the hardness to 50%, although you'll be able to play with this later on depending on the look you prefer. At this point, I'm going to open my brush settings panel to add the remaining options to make the brush look furry. In brush tip shape, make sure that the spacing box is checked. And I like to set it anywhere from 1% to 20%. And again, you'll probably play with this later depending on the look you want. Next, click the shape dynamics. And here I'm going to change the angle jitter. But first, let's talk about what exactly is the jitter. The jitter is the randomness of an element. And the higher the jitter, the more random the setting will be. So on this, we'll leave the size jitter at 0%, but I'm going to set the angle jitter as high as it can go. The angle jitter will specify the angle of the brush along the stroke, and setting it to 100% will really make the brush look random, much like the randomness of fur. Next, turn on scattering. As you might imagine, this option scatters your elements along the brush. To increase the randomness, check the box for both axes. Play with the scatter to decide just how much you want your fur elements to scatter away from each other. I've set mine to 350%, but this can also be tweaked as you try out your brush. The only other option you'll change here is the count, which will increase the density of the fur even more. Count jitter will also randomize the elements. However, you'll notice that for this brush, you don't really see much of a difference. Moving on to the color dynamics, this is what's going to give you the dimension in the brush. And keep in mind that the options in color dynamics affect the foreground color the most. The first thing you wanna do is check the box, apply per tip, and then establish a foreground and a background color. This will be the deep and lighter tones of your brush. Next, increase the foreground background jitter which will change how much of the background color you'll see combined with the foreground color. The higher the percentage, the more you'll see the background color showing through. The hue jitter randomizes the foreground color, so the higher the percentage, the more you'll see a difference in the hue of the initial foreground color. I would suggest you leave this at 0% if you want your brush to stay relatively similar to the colors you've chosen. The saturation and brightness jitter work in a similar manner in that a lower percentage changes the saturation or brightness, but the value of the color will still be very close to the foreground color, while a higher percentage increases the difference between the foreground color and the colors appearing in the brush. The last option, purity, will increase or decrease the saturation of the overall brush. So dragging the slider to the left will make the brush more gray, while dragging the slider to the right will make it look more vibrant. Play around with the color dynamics as well as some of the other settings until you get the look you want. I tend to go back to the brush tip shape and change the hardness to give the brush a slightly softer appearance. But notice as I do that, I'll also need to make some additional adjustments so that the brush doesn't appear so dense. Once you get the look that you want, Click the icon in the lower right corner of the brush settings panel to save the brush so you'll have it for future projects. Make sure all the options are checked, including capture brush size and include color. And keep in mind that this just ensures that the brush saves at the original size and colors you specify. You can still adjust the brush size and the color if you want to. Just change the foreground and background colors. And to go back to the original fur brush, just tap the brush again in the brushes panel. 
there's a lot you can do with this. And if you start playing with the shape of the hairs, you can come up with some really interesting brushes. In fact, I tried this with the Dune brush, which is one of the Photoshop legacy brushes. And I think it came out kind of cool. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, that's great, but ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I totally feel you. And there are plenty of artists who have created collections of fur brushes that you can download and just use in Photoshop. And if this is something that you are interested in and something you're looking for, my recommendation is to start with Etsy. They've got some great artists there. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.